If there is anyone you would think would have Amazon's billion dollar The Rings of Power's back, it is the establishment critics. Time and again, we have seen some rather extreme differences in consensus between professional establishment critics and the actual audience the entertainment in question has to cater to in order to be successful. There was every reason to think that would be the case here as well, and on the whole that is indeed what is going on. A whole lot of publications are giving the Rings of Power the highest of praise for its diversity, inclusion and money spent on visuals. But when it comes to things like story, characters, acting and so on, the praise is far more measured, even in the most positive of reviews. Which more than implies the series is god-awful. Case in point, some high-profile publications broke rank and called it out for being the disaster the producer and showrunners indeed have tacitly promised it would be since day one. To set the stage for that, I'll begin this editorial by looking into a positive review which isn't really that positive after all. Before looking at some of the more scathing of the earliest reviews, and finally, reiterate why this outcome was fully expected and entirely predictable. Let's begin with the review from the industry trade of industry trades, Variety. This is the publication by the Hollywood elite, for the Hollywood elite and Hollywood peons. They're fully down with the message, so there was no way this review was ever going to be anything other than positive. But even here, there is a hedge. Most people only read the title, and this title reads, the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power sweeping and gutsy, makes the most of its ample lore and Amazon budget. That is a positive title, to be clear. But that kind of wording, makes the most of whatever, is really only used when that whatever comes with some kind of restriction, as in, this was better than it had any right to be. What follows is a wall of text that is all positive, but which doesn't really say much. It's all very positive though, except for this hedge towards the end. With a whopping 50 episodes reportedly planned, it's hard at this point to say how successful the Rings of Power will ultimately be as a whole. There's plenty of time for some plots to overstay their welcome as their paths intersect with the more intriguing ones. Or for the series' overall narrative to get tangled in the weeds of Tolkien's dense Lord of the Rings appendices. I stress that this is just my interpretation, but to me, this looks like someone has written a review that was, well, if not instructed, then expected to be positive. And the reviewer threw in some future-proofing hedges, knowing full well that a too positive review will not age well. Speaking of, let's look at some reviews that just gave up on any pretensions. Entertainment Weekly's review is titled The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Review. Amazon's prequel is kind of a catastrophe. And it opens with, there are ways to do a prequel, and The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power does them all wrong. It takes six or seven things everyone remembers from the famous movie trilogy, adds a water tank, makes nobody fun, teases mysteries that aren't mysteries, and sends the best character on a pointless detour. After going through some plot points, which seem disorganized and messy, the series is unfavorably compared with Game of Thrones. Despite all the streaming war headlines, this series is nothing like HBO's concurrent Game of Thrones spin-off. House of Dragon is a family drama plus dragons. The two Rings of Power episodes I've seen feel more like an 8-hour Infinity War, with disparate goods coalescing towards a big bad. The reviewer clearly knows some Tolkien though, saying, Tolkien's saga was anti-industrialization, which makes it hilarious that Rings of Power is an Amazon product. Much press has swirled around the production cost, but if a huge budget made great TV, we'd be on Terra Nova season 12. Showrunners J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay show no instinct for pacing. Some characters seem to teleport far distances, while others walk slowly between villages, despite horses-like existing. A big sea attack looks unfinished, introducing a massive threat that's quickly forgotten. Director J.A. Bayona finds isolated moments of grandeur, but the helicopter shots get repetitive fast. The fights aren't quite up to the Walking Dead level, and the battles won't make any crab feeders nervous. 
Frequent cuts to an explanatory map are more funny than informative. Finally, the conclusion reads, This series is a special catastrophe of ruined potential, sacrificing a glorious universe's limitless possibilities at the altar of tried-and-true blockbuster desperation. Great C-. But that's nothing compared to the Daily Mail. Titled No Turkey, However Bloated and Stupid, could ever be big enough to convey the mesmerizing awfulness of Amazon's billion-dollar Tolkien epic. The Daily Mail review reads, This is a disaster dragon, plucked, spatchcocked with a tanker load of Paxo stuffed up its fundament, roasted and served with soggy sprouts. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, is so staggeringly bad, it's hilarious. Everything about it is ill-judged to a spectacular extreme. The cliché laden script, the dire acting, the leaden pace, the sheer inconsistency and confusion as it lurches between styles. Where do we start? Well, they started with the idiocy of blowing a billion on this drivel, saying, Whoever thought that was a wise buy must have been smashed out of their minds on Miravur, the elvish liquor. There's no doubt we can see the budget. It casts a throbbing glow over the screen like a chest full of gold. Ultra-high definition computer graphics point ivory cities in mountain passes and conjure gigantic monsters in palaces of dark magic. But magnificent visuals are meaningless if nobody knows who the audience is meant to be. And it's impossible to guess whether the Rings of Power is meant for children, for hardcore fans, or for general viewers, because it fails them all. That's some harsh words there. But I'm sure Jeff Bezos, owner of both Amazon and the Washington Post, will take solace in the glowing review from his own newspaper. Titled The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power is Beautiful Banal Boredom, the Bezos Journal review reads, According to news reports, the Amazon founder and Tolkien fan had his company plunk down an estimated $250 million just for the rights to make a TV show based on The Lord of the Rings. The resulting series, debuting Thursday, will be the most expensive ever made. But you already know what I do. If money were all it took to make the next fantasy monoculture phenomenon, it would have happened by now. And so, the reviewer is quite frank about what all that money bought. The copious and choppily edited action in the first two episodes, though screen for critics, is bloodless and computer effects driven. Its defining influence isn't Game of Thrones epic scale, but Marvel's newtedness. If the production design weren't so spectacular, and the characters and settings bought up by Amazon, the Rings of Power wouldn't be all that out of place on Disney+. After labeling the showrunners as inexperienced, and the actors as serviceable but unremarkable, the Washington Post concludes, The rings of power seem to be banking on dazzling Tolkien fans with soaring sights of exotic lands that may not have been seen before, but for audiences not already invested in the comings and goings of the pointy-eared folk, the series doesn't provide much reason to care. That is more or less accurate. No one except Tolkien fans have any reason to care. What the Washington Post gets wrong, though, is that Tolkien fans won't be dazzled by this. On the contrary, Tolkien fans are shunning it. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, is ideopolitical activist drivel suitable for no one, and that shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. When the Titanic struck the iceberg, it was a mathematical certainty that it would sink within hours, even though no one believed it right away. So too it is with the Rings of Power. The sinking we're witnessing right now was a mathematical certainty from the moment the iceberg was struck. Or rather, the moment incompetent activists were hired to manage this $1 billion investment. Since day one, the producer and showrunners, all of whom are alumni of the franchise-killing production company Bad Robot, have gone out of their way to sell the message that the Rings of Power is all about diversity and inclusion. What it is not about is preserving the legacy of Tolkien, or about being authentic to his work. It also is not about telling any kind of compelling story, as none of those involved on the production side are remotely capable of that. 
And so, the Rings of Power was an entirely predictable disaster. It could end no other way. The only thing Amazon can hope for right now is that as many as possible will tune in to Amazon Prime to check it out, even if only to hate watch it. Because hate watching still helps them recoup their investment, so they don't have to learn any hard lessons here. Will you be watching the Rings of Power? Let me know in the comments.